Ghana has been ranked last among 76 countries across the world in the latest, biggest ever global school rankings on mathematics and science. Other countries in the lowest ranks are Oman, Morocco, Honduras, South Africa, which were ranked 72nd, 73rd, and 74th, respectively. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the, the, the think tank, says the, co the comparisons based on test scores in 76 countries show the link between education and economic growth. IKJC, who is an educationist in an interview, attributed the problem to the unattractive ways teachers have made learning of the subjects to the students. Whether you're an educationist or a parent or a government education man, we must all feel very saddened and alarmed mm. at this situation. Ghana coming last is very, very sad and very, very alarming. I, I, would, I would want to ask, what, what could have accounted for this? Uh, maybe we'll have to do a proper study, but of the curve, mm. I will mention just one or two problems with our education delivery. You know, uh, over the years, not just today, but over the years, school pupils and students have had some kind of mental block towards the learning and teaching of mathematics and science. What I mean is, uh, there seems to be this idea that math is so difficult, no matter how hard the student tries or the people tries, he will never understand it. And uh, this is the first difficulty. The second difficulty lies with our improper grasp of the language of communication, whether it is English or our local language. It's a unique language to teach math and science. There's a difference between the, or the number of oranges was reduced by four and the number of oranges was reduced to four. You will get different answers. Do the children understand the language? And then there comes the teacher. See, the good teacher knows what he's going to teach. He prepares very, very well. He is willing to teach. He delivers his lesson very, very well. And of course, he is motivated. The motivation can come from the student's appreciation of what he's doing. The motivation can come from proper conditions of service. So that any time he goes to school, he knows very well that here are people who are ready to learn. I am also motivated. Unfortunately, the other problem is that over the years, mathematics has been taught uh, in a way which has reinforced the perception of the child that it is not a subject you can easily grasp. This has contributed, I believe, mm. to the falling standard, not just of science and math education, but of our education generally. President John Dramani Mahama is to inaugurate more NEC committees despite controversy over the inclusion of Togbe Afede as a member of the party's economic committee. We go over to the NDC headquarters for some live feed on what is going on there now. This had a well quest. Honorable Alban Sumani Bagwen, Honorable Ofusu Ajare, Honorable Kletus Apul Avoka, Honorable Dr. Valerie Sawyer. Uh, well, the, the, again, there was a debate as to whether we should add non lawyers to the committee to moderate <laughs> the, the discussions and arguments. Otherwise, they will never <laughs> end one meeting. But for the time being, we are leaving it like that. We'll be watching. Um, the national chairman mentioned the tendency for people to clamor to be on these committees and after one week they cease attending meetings. The national executive has therefore decided that any member of the committee 
who absents himself on three consecutive occasions, consecutive underline, consecutive occasions ceases to be a member of the committee. Uh -huh. That's why I don't want to. <laughs> okay. So, okay, you can add anything that you want to add. But the reasonable excuse cannot make you absent forever. Because the meetings have to take place. The difficulty we have had is that there is a law about the quorum to make meetings effective. And that is one third. So if you have a 30-member committee and you cannot get 10 members meeting, any decision they take is not valid. So instead of leaving your names there to be affecting our uh, quorum, we will decide to delete them. And then if we end up with seven members, they will be able to do the work. So um, I want to thank you very much for responding to um, our invitation. Let me use the platform to apologize to Togbe, uh, Togbe Apede. I think before the appointments are made, we send people to do consultation. And you know the names are many. So I think on one occasion also, the consultation was not complete, and then the name slipped through. So we profusely, on behalf of the party, apologize to Togbe Afede for uh, the embarrassment this might have caused him. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Well, that was a live feed of uh, what is uh, currently going on at the national headquarters of the National Democratic Congress uh, at at Debraka. And you just heard the general secretary there apologize on behalf of the party to Togbe Afede. We'll bring you much more on this particular one at 3 p.m. on the Pulse. Now, Nagat President Christian Adaipoku tells Joy News the freeze on employment by government is putting a lot of stress on its members who are currently in the classrooms. According to him, some of them have had to work for longer hours because of the non-availability of new staff. Last year, government proposed a program to limit the number of public sector jobs in order to free up the public purse. We have not received so much compl complaints from those in the um, colleges of education, but um, those who have completed universities and uh, who want to teach in this near high school, those are the people who are complaining all over. Our checks indicate that most of them have gone to the various senior high schools and seen for places. Even though some vacancies might have been created, the headmasters are reluctant to um, accept people there because they have not been given any directive to employ. Okay, so we can now go back to the national headquarters of the ruling NDC, uh, where the president has actually uh, taken the podium in his bid to inaugurate some new committees. We can now take that live feed now. It's done by the subcommittees of the party. We have a lot of talent in this party. Not everybody can stand for political office. And so after those who have stood for political office and occupied the normal uh, national executive offices, you have to bring all the talent the party can master to serve on the various uh, committees that service the party. So these are very important uh, positions you are, you are taking, and I believe that uh, you give it your, your best. As he said, attendance has normally been a problem because, of course, people have a lot of things that they are doing, but as much as possible, if you can make your, yourself available to attend you know, your committee meetings, that would be helpful. Some of the committees don't meet often, and it's a good thing they don't meet often. That is the disciplinary committee. It means that everybody <laughs> is being of good behavior. <laughs> it, it doesn't make it necessary for the committee to meet. And that's why it's the smallest committee. We have always argued about the size of the committees, and I have always held the view that big committees are very unwieldy and very difficult to uh, be successful. But the argument too has been that the bigger the committee, the more likely you are 
to always have a quorum when you meet. And so, as many of you who can attend and make your services available to the party, we will be very happy to do that. Let me thank you for inviting myself and His Excellency the Vice President to join you in the inauguration of these committees. These are very important committees, legal, political, complaint and conflict resolution and dis disciplinary committees. And um, I believe that the people who have been chosen have been chosen as a result of the particular talents that they have and that they'll bring those talents to bear on the work of the committees on which they serve. And so without much ado, I will proceed to administer the oath and uh, declare the committees inaugurated. And so for all those who are members of the four committees that were mentioned, I'll bring you much more of that particular incident subsequently on the polls at 3 p.m. right here on your Joy News channel on Multi TV. Let's now go back to the story of the National Association of Graduate Teachers and the President, Christian Adaipo, who tells Joy News the freeze on employment by government is putting a lot of stress on its members who are currently in the classrooms. According to him, some of them have had to work for longer hours because of the non-availability of new staff. Last year, government proposed a program to limit the number of public sector jobs in order to free the public purse. Much complaints from those in the um, colleges of education, but um, those who have completed universities and uh, who want to teach in this near high school, those are the people who are complaining all over. Our checks indicate that most of them have gone to the various senior high schools and in four places. Even though some vacancies might have been created, the headmasters are reluctant to um, accept people there because they have not been given any directive to employ. And we think that uh, that's a worry because um, as we go on, a lot of people are retiring from the service and we need to replenish the staff. Um, the basic school, yes, because people are trained, the GS knows the number, and therefore when they complete the colleges of education, they move people there directly. But the senior high schools have slight problems with the um, staffing as of now, because uh, they are not being permitted to replace teachers who have gone on retirement and so on. I see. So uh, for now, how is this situation affecting uh, education in the country? Yes, it affects education because mm. uh, it's leaving some classrooms empty and um, it's putting so much pressure on the existing staff. Because if somebody has gone on retirement and his uh, lessons are being taken over by a teacher who also has his own load of lessons to take, that becomes a worry. And so even though the Ministry of Finance said it, that they have um, decided that they will allow the kind of education service and health service to treat more people. I don't think the directives have gone down to the uh, schools for the, to, to give the headmasters the chance to be able to uh, give assurance to people to be employed by the education service. So your association, Nagrat, uh, what is the association immediately hoping to do to uh, get this, this problem fixed? Yes, we have started receiving the complaints um, especially those who are yet to complete their national services, um, a lot of them have approached some schools asking that they should be given the chance when they finally complete their national service. But it looks like most of the schools are turning them down. So we will want to, um, we will have interaction with the Ghana Education Service and the Ministry of Education and see if there is a way that that issue can be resolved so that. Um, uh, it will not continue to bring on due pressure on existing staff and that some classrooms will not be left empty. The Human Rights Court, the Human Rights Division of Anakra High Court today declined ruling on an injunction suit filed by Obwasi West Member of Parliament, Kweku Kwating, and two others against the National Communications Authority's decision to set up an interconnect clearinghouse. The Interconnect Clearinghouse is, among others, intended to fight fraud. However, the plaintiffs say the controversial move is unlawful as it constitutes interference in the right to free communication of all telecommunication service subscribers. Join News' Kwache Afrenyama is on the line and now joins us with more. So, Afre, uh, why did the court refuse to rule on the injunction? 
Well, according to the presiding judge, ruling in favor or otherwise, uh, that's been of the plaintiffs or the defendants who prejudice the matter. He, he mentions further that he, this, that's especially because some of the issues that the plaintiffs have raised are, are, are linked. So at the end of the day, if he, 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 he gives the ruling on, or he had given a ruling on the injunction, it would have given a certain idea of how the case would go. And indeed, he insists that the, the right thing to do, in his view, is rather to study the case of both parties as the the, 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 the proceedings unfold. He shadows his agenda, the case, but the, the trial proper will begin at the next session, which is two weeks from now, Chen Chahene. Mm. Now, how have the plaintiffs and the lawyers for the NCA been reacting to this outcome? Well, it's pretty interesting. They have, they all have their interpretation of what the court decision means. While the lawyers for the uh, National Communications Authority, led by uh, Dennis A.J. Jumo, he's in, indeed a member of that, that legal team. He, he mentions that the, the, the court decision means that they can go ahead with a process. We're talking about the Interconnect Clearinghouse uh, system. But Mr. Kweku Kwasin, his clients, and, and in fact the legal team, they insist that the, by virtue of the fact that the matter is still in court, the NTA cannot go ahead with the process. In fact, Mr. Kweku Kwasin says that should the NTA go ahead with the process despite the, the matter being in court, the, he will file a contempt application against the National Communications Authority. But the, the issue becomes a, a bit confusing, more especially because the court did not provide clear-cut directions as to whether the NCA can go ahead with the process or not. So as it remains now, uh, of course, as I mentioned earlier, the NCA has said that they will go ahead with it. It remains to be seen whether uh, Mr. Kweku Kwasi will also move ahead with his uh, vow to sue them should they do that. Now, Afra, you've also been uh, following up on the trial of uh, the UK-based Ghanaian pastor charged with murder of his uh, pregnant British wife. Now, what can you report on that? At the last session, the state prosecutors mentioned that they were waiting for advice from the AG's department. Mm. But today, that advice is in. The state prosecutor mentioned in court that, in fact, the AG agrees with the lawyers for the defendant, that uh, the pastor here, that he should be granted bail. They, however, say that. They, they, they still suspect, or they have every reason to believe that he is, he is guilty. He's guilty in this particular case, but they do not have enough evidence to hold him now. So, he, for now, the, the Attorney General Department thinks that uh, the prophet Isaiah do that should be granted bail, but the magistrate court also uh, says that it doesn't have jurisdiction, it doesn't have the power to grant bail in instances of this nature when we're talking about murder and so on. So the matter has uh, been referred to the uh, High Court. The High Court will rule on this matter within the next two weeks. Okay. Now finally, lawyers for Dr. Ali Gabaz are also expected to open their defense in the sodomy trial involving uh, Dr. Ali Gabaz and uh, one young uh, child over there. Uh, what, what happened in court this morning as well? What's the update on that? Well, they didn't they, they didn't open their defense today. They yeah. indicated, the lawyers for Dr. Ali Gabbard indicated that they need time to file a motion. In fact, as you mentioned, at the last meeting, the court ruled that the submission of no case they question it completely and ask the lawyers to open their defense. But they say that they are appealing against that decision. They think that they still the prosecution has no case against their client. So, the court has given them time to do that. Kwachi Afrinema, thank you very much for that, Kwachi. Afrinema is a court correspondent. He reported live from the court. Now, the definition of what should be gifts in the conduct of the public offices bill has uh, generated debate on the floor as Parliament considers the bill. The bill is meant to ensure greater professionalism in the conduct of public offices. There have been calls by some MPs for more consultations on the bill. Correspondent Elton John Bobby joins us live over the telephone with some more on this. So, Elton, what, what triggered this debate? Well, the, the, the debate is still on, on, ongoing, mm. and uh, the subject about gifts is what generated some heat on the floor 
of Parliament. Now, the definition as contained in the, uh, the memorandum accompanying the bill, you know, describes what can be this, what can be to be acceptable or non-acceptable gifts. Now, it says that if a public officer is given 1,000 Ghana cities, that public officer will be under no obligation to disclose uh, the source of this particular money. However, if that same person is given 10,000 Ghana cities, then you it will be uh, it will, it will, that person will have to now disclose the source of the money, and then uh, some kind of inquiry going to whether uh, the uh, giving of that gift of 10,000 Ghana cities can compromise the person's uh, job or not. Now, indeed, mm -hmm. what what about this whole issue has got to do with clause six of the bill, which says that where a public officer after making a declaration of assets acquires an asset which would have been included in the declaration if that asset had been acquired before the declaration was made, the asset will be deemed to have been acquired unlawfully unless it can reasonably be regarded as being income, acceptable gifts, loans, inheritance, or otherwise lawful. So uh, this what about the whole issue. Mm -hmm. What the intention is saying is that if you go into public offices, office with your acquired assets and you fail to disclose it, that can be described as an illegal acquisition. I, I must say that the House just comes to a decision on this particular clause. The debate is ongoing. Mm. But uh, Elton, one more thing: Why the discrimination? If one thousand Ghana cedis is supposed to be a gift, and then ten thousand is whether supposed to be a bribe or something to to force me to do something for you? The thinking is that one thousand cedis cannot, you know, compromise uh, the public office holder okay. because they are looking at it as being a very small amount. Mm. However, they think that ten thousand Ghana cedis or more is enough compromise that public uh, public uh, office order that the person should disclose it and then uh, you know uh, tell the public where the person got the money from okay all right so but but Elton, what else has been happening in parliament today aside what well, uh, this is what they've been doing uh, since morning oh okay all right thank you very much for that update elton john Bobe is our parliamentary correspondent he just spoke to us live from parliament house a private legal practitioner and a member of the legal team of the ruling National Democratic Congress, Abraham Amalaba, is calling for an interpretation into what constitutes uh, a chief taking part in active party politics. Article 276 of the 1992 Constitution stipulates chiefs not to take part in active party politics. Speaking on the AM show, following news, the NDC has nominated Agogbo Mefia of Asogli Togbe Afede to serve on the party's economic committee. Meanwhile, Agogo Mefea of uh, Asogli, Togbe Afede, the 14th, has declined an invitation to serve on the newly formed Economic Committee of the party. Article 276 is titled, Chiefs Not to Take Part in Active Party Politics. And 276-1 says, A chief shall not take part in active party politics, and any chief wishing to do so and seeking elections to parliament shall abdicate his tool or scheme. Mm. Now, the issue is what is active party politics? What What is the definition of it? Is it when you wear a t-shirt done by a political party's colors? Or when you mount a political platform? This aspect of it has not been defined. And the courts have not made a pronouncement on what amounts to active party politics. And I wish that one of these days, considering the fact that there are chiefs who are playing various roles in our political life, there will be the need to, to as it were, interpret this word or phrase, active party politics. When you look at the Constitution, it goes on to talk about elections, seeking elections to parliament. Now, that is very clear. If you are seeking elections to parliament, you have to abdicate. But the issue of not taking part in active politics is what is a gray area. Has Tobe Afede's uh, appointment breached the Constitution? It is not clear. Because I don't know whether appointing somebody to a, a committee of a political party amounts to active party politics, amounts to playing active party politics. Because, like I indicated, we have not been told what amounts to active party politics. So for me, it's good that he has brought this whole thing to a rest because he has even declined the appointment. Mm. He says that um, he does not think that, in his view, 
he does not think that he should take up that position, considering his own philosophy of providing assistance to all kinds of government, and he wants to be somebody who can cut across all mm. political he, he wants to be a civil citizen, a, a, irrespective yes. of which government. Exactly. So it brings this whole matter to a rest. But I still think that we need an interpretation of <laughs> active party <laughs> politics. You're still watching Joy News today here on Multi TV. We're taking a quick break here. We'll be back shortly. Don't go away. Thanks for staying on. Now, irrigation is one of the key challenges facing substance farmers across the country. This forces many youth farmers to trickle down to the south when the rainy season is over. Some communities along the Black Volta are now using the water to do all year round farming. One of such communities is Meto in the Laura district where farmers are together working towards food security. Black Volta forms a small part of the international border between Ghana and Ivory Coast, and also a section of the border between Ghana and Burkina Faso. In the Upper West region, several communities are situated close to the Black Volta, one of which is Meto, a farming community. Due to the erratic rainfall pattern, coupled with a long period of dry season, farmers have resorted to using water from the Black Volta to do all year round farming. Four years ago, they started the cultivation of butternut squash on an 18 hectare land. It has harvesting period of 99 days and it is in hot demand by the European markets during the winter season. However, they have challenges in the price mechanism. Farmers say they are often cheated. For this season, farmers have harvested about 19 metric tons of butternut squash valued at about 80,000 pounds sterling. District Chief Executive for Laura Pascal Derry, who doubles as a value chain specialist, suspects foul play. Instead of continuing to do butternut squash, without knowing uh, an end market ready and the pricing structure, let's go to the sister butternut squash, which is watermelon. watermelon. Yes. So under watermelon, we have the, the market completely within us. The Laura District Director of Food and Agriculture, Kuro Salifu Diaka, speaks of the benefits farmers are deriving from the project. Mace like this, you, you get it, about two, two, and a, two and a half months, you pluck it, and go and sell, you get an income, continuous income because they they show the they show the same staggered every two weeks they show a crop. So they are now this now they are now reaping the, the results. Every week they come and harvest, give it to the market people, and they get something out of it. Despite the successes chalked, farmers say they face some peculiar challenges, key among them being frequent breakdown of their water pumping machine. Our water pumping machine frequently breaks down and we have no tanks to store our water. Our appeal is that if we get a water tanker, we can store the water there for use whenever the machine breaks down. Deputy Upper West Regional Minister Dr. Mushebu Muhammad Alpha took a tour of the 18 hectare farm and was impressed with progress made so far. When we talk about security, people just think that it is the fiscal security. You are safe to go and sleep, no armed robber. But the worst armed robber is hunger. <laughs> With what you are doing here, you are protected from that worst armed robber. This move is expected to lift most residents in his country out of poverty. One specialized area of nursing with an even more acute nurse to patient ratio is mental health care. Now, considering the fact that Ghana's chief psychiatrist has always maintained that a considerable number of the population need attention, the number of nurses and even facilities to care for such people are woefully inadequate. The challenge is mainly because of the stigma that the, and, and the working conditions nurses who work in psychiatric hospitals in Ghana endure. Joy News' Adelaide Arthur has been speaking to Kobe Blay with the newly established psychiatric unit of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital about the occupational hazards he faces. How difficult is it to care for the mentally challenged? I wouldn't say it's difficult, but it's mixed. Um, it can be very exciting and it can be very stressful managing 
persons who do not have insights into their conditions. You find out that um, they do not want to agree with the fact that they are mentally ill. But I also understand some uh, um, patients even attack the nurses. Have you ever been physically attacked before? Yes, it's a couple of times, uh, but in all, we were successful in, in managing the situation. Um, there was this time a patient was on the ward and I had asked him to go and eat. And he says, why do I have to come and tell him to go and eat when he does not have a stomach to eat? Do I not see his uh, president? And who am I? I have to go and serve him the food and order. I said, well, I could serve you the food, but please come forward. Come to where we all sit and eat. But he wouldn't want to. I turned around to go, and then it was a hit at my back. And a few colleagues to share same. And uh, there have been instances where some have been physically deformed, and they have gone away without compensation yet. There was this time uh, uh, some staff during night duty were attacked by one of the patients and had hit their eyes. What's your response usually when you are attacked like this? Well, some of these attacks could have a reason why they did happen. So we usually would like to talk to you, find out why you did that, give you some counseling, give you medication, or sometimes we do the seclusion where to keep the patient safe and other patients and staff to safe. Yeah. I'm sure there are happy moments as well where, I mean, you tend to have fun with the patients. We use certain mechanisms that involves having some domestic activities together, performing domestic activities together. In that course, we use that to assess them. But it could be a lot of fun when a patient could walk up to you and say, look at this guy, you just came today, and look at how you are misbehaved. Do you know how many days you've been here? So it, you, you, we have a lot of times we share a lot of jokes together. Ghana has made successful strides in reducing maternal mortality, according to the Ghana Health Service. Now, this is a millennium development goal the country is assured of achieving before the deadline expires by the end of this year. Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Ebenezer Piadensha, attributed the success to the tireless efforts by dedicated healthcare providers. One of such is Bridget Bevia, a midwife at the Savlugu Government Hospital. She was uh, adjudged the 2015 best nurse in the Northern Region. My colleague, Hano Dame, has been finding out from her what her motivation has been. 15 best nurse of the Northern Region. Congratulations. When I came to the hospital, I teamed up with my colleagues who were already there. And then what we did was we established some sort of friendship with the clients. Like when we are less busy in the world, we sit, chat with them, they tell us why some of them do not come to the hospital. So when they put those things across, after that myself and my colleagues, we sit down and think how best we can get those people who are not coming to come uh, to the hospital. Besides, the hospital was doing something like when the TB is, when a woman is in, in labor and the TBA brings the woman to uh, the hospital, the, the hospital gives the TBA a token. What I did was that we followed up on those TBAs, we visited them, and they also told us their challenges. We encouraged them. When a woman comes in labor, yeah, and then we, we, we I find out that uh, this maternal and child mortality will not make it. We take steps to uh, take actions immediately. You are an award recipient from the Northern Region. How do you feel about that? I'm very glad. I'm very glad. It, it comes as a, a way forward for me to to work harder, just as I did, and then management saw what I did and recommended me for this award. So this comes as an edge to make me work harder. Well, that was Bridget Agbo Sege in an interview there with uh, my colleague Hannah Odami. Time now for us to check out the very latest in the world of business right after this. In our first business story, there's, uh, the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of Ghana has increased the policy rate to 22% from 21%.
my colleague Abigail McQueen, she joins me now with more on this. So, Abigail, tell us what factors went into the decision. Okay. And uh, Abigail Admiral Quinch is lying just to drop there. But we can now move on to some other stories. And Executive Director of the Environmental Protection Agency, Daniel Amlalo, is charging mining firms to strictly abide by environmental preservation laws or exit the mining industry. He was addressing issues related to the agency's Aquabin Performance Rating Program, which the Indian government says it wants to understudy. According to the EPA boss, an upgraded form of the rating program will outlaw all mining activities which degrade the environment. PA's Aquaben program has since its inception assessed and rated the environmental performance of mining and manufacturing operations using a five-color rating scheme. The success of the program has attracted the Indians to understudy the rating system. We in the State Pollution Control Board Odisha are also implementing a similar program called ECAMRA. Of course, we are just uh, starting the program. Uh, Ghana has uh, been implementing this Akoban program for last many years. Their system is very well established. They are having a continuous rating system of the industries, mines, and we are here to learn what kind of process they went through uh, while de developing the Akoban program the difficulties, if at all, they faced any, and how they have overcome, and how it has been made acceptable to everybody. The EPA, meanwhile, says an upgraded Aquaban program with high expectations of operators will be in use at the next environmental assessment of companies in the sector. We are disclosing performance for 2014, and then we are starting with new areas. We mentioned the uh, metropolitan municipal and district assemblies. That's one area. We have done some work on the oil marketing companies and then the hospitality in the other uh, hotels. So new areas are coming up. Akuban ratings are evaluated by analyzing more than 100 performance indicators that include quantitative and qualitative data with visual information. Let's go to our previous business story where the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of Ghana has increased the policy rate to 22% from 21%. My colleague Abigail Adman Quintry joins me with more on this particular. So, uh, Abigail, I was asking, what factors went into this decision? Yes, Kabna, um, the Bank of Ghana is mainly looking at the challenges we are having in the economy right now. They are looking at the inflationary pressures, and this is the heightening inflation rate that we are currently experiencing. Just today, inflation has increased to 16.8%, and the Bank of Ghana thinks that there is a likelihood that inflation will keep going up, and so they need to tighten monetary policy stance to make sure that inflation comes down. And also, we are having challenges with um, the energy uh, our power situation, and the city is also depreciating all these issues are weighing down on the economy and so um, business sentiments have come down and economic activities are also um, slowed down. All these mm. issues um, pushed the Monetary Policy Committee to um, increase the policy rate. I see. Abigail, explain this to me. Uh, how does this affect the ordinary Ghanaian citizen? Yes, um, for, for this time, um, it's going to really impact on um, credit. The Bank of Ghana is explaining that they want to reduce the demand for credit, as in when businesses want to lend from banks or um, financial institutions. Um, this really directly affects um, the interest rate, mm. even so, though um, sometimes we don't really see the um, impact. But mm. when, when the policy rate is increased, we see some. Um, marginal marginal impact in interest rates and this time would mm. really see it because the bank of ghana is saying that they want the demand for credit to come down so that the pressures on the um, forex market would also come down i see um, this is the so 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 if i get what you're saying correctly if your business money may um, accessing credit facilities may be a lot more difficult or even if you are to get it you're going to get it at, a, at an extra cost at a higher cost is that the case Exactly. But um, for them, this is part of the fiscal consolidation they are doing. And as um, 
they go on with the process, uh, they would take the appropriate actions to reduce the rate if need okay. be. Now, did the Bank of Ghana also uh, speak of any measures being adopted to arrest the falling city? Uh, the meeting is still ongoing. Um, okay. As it stands now, mm -hmm. the, the governor has a meeting on the city. And so I'll get back in the meeting to know what exactly uh, they're doing this time around on the city. But I'm sure there are measures they are putting in place to, you know, arrest the free fall of the city. And mm. tightening the monetary policy is one okay. uh, one measure. And the Bank of Ghana uh, just explained All right. that. Okay, it's Abigail, thank you very much. Basically, to reduce the pressure from the exchange market. Okay, thank you very much, Abigail. Abigail Admar, going to race with the business desk. And uh, what she just said meant that if you're a businessman, it's going to cost you a lot more to access credit from the various banks in town. We're taking a break here. When we come back, we have a lot of sports for you. Stay with us. The sports car for Tunisia tonight for the first leg of the CAF Confederation Cup game against Esperance of Tunis. Now, the Phobians are hoping to record a favorable result a way to make the second leg a mere formality. The team have been in training uh, at Akusi for the past one week and a lot have been said about their chances of making it to the money zone of the competition and former coach of the team that's Mohamed Polo has added his voice to it. According to him, uh, you know, Herbert Addo and the team and he will not be surprised actually if the Phobians fail to qualify. We, we have to be frank. But football has no logic. If you have the belief, if you know what you're doing, that is why I said something is missing. I hope he should be able to go through. But if he could not go, he could, he could fumble with the less fancy, you know, teams like uh, uh, Joliba and, what, you know, what is the name? And Gorn and everything. What of the, 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 the big nuts? Esperance. Uh, uh, you know, they are big guns. Even they, you know, they, they fought us somewhere before coming, you know, to... Yes. So you could see that if they are fought and you are able to go, what do you do? But do, 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 do your tactics help you? Will your methodology help you? Will your direction, technical direction, okay? Because it's a straight one. What you were doing is what you are going to do. You have nothing to change. Okay, so that was former coach of Accra Hartifog Mohib Saib. We will still stay with the CAF Confederation Cup and Champions League winners. That's uh, Hartifog will leave by 8 p.m. as I noted earlier. And we've been joined on the telephone line by public relations officer of the club. That's Mohib Saib. Mohib, thanks so much for joining me here on News Today. Uh, you know, you have a big game against Esperance uh, this weekend. What are the expectations of your club going into the game? We are very hopeful going into the game. We've prepared very well. The boys are in very high spirits and we are looking forward to a great game and uh, a good result. So, so what, what have the coach and the players been saying ahead of your trip to Tunisia? Well, ahead of the start of the season, I mean of the competition, uh, we as management made the team aware that uh, our target is the uh, group stage of the Confederation Cup. Well, since you've spoken uh, about your target, uh, we know yes. it's, you know going into games like this, uh, motivation plays a big role. Uh, has management made any promises to the team? We haven't made any special promises. Uh, we have tried to get the boys to motivate themselves. Uh, what we've been telling them is that whatever monies we give them will never push them to the levels of prosperity and affluence that they aspire uh, until they go abroad mm. and so they should seize this opportunity to play their hearts out and attract the scouts okay and i'm sure that is what has driven these young boys on up to this point mm. uh, they, we've made them understand that as far as management is concerned this is the final mm. because once they win this match we have achieved our target mm. and they have responded positively with assurances that they are going to do the job okay so b before you take leave of me what was the itinerary of the team like well the team returned from residential camping uh, in the akosombo area yesterday uh, they've been asked to go home put their things in order and say goodbye to their families mm. 
So we are regrouping this afternoon for the trip to uh, Tunis later this evening. Um, the flight is at 8 o'clock. Okay. So thanks so much, uh, Muhib Saib, for joining me here on News Today. That was Muhib Saib. He is a spokesperson for Accra Heart of Oak. And they will be leaving town tonight uh, for Tunisia for that big game against Esperance of Tunis. is on Sunday, and there will be live commentary on your superstation, Joy 99.7 FM. Let's do some more. Well, we are going back to the national headquarters of the ruling NDC, where President John Mahama is currently inaugurating some committees of the party. My colleague Fred Smith joins us live over the telephone now. So, Fred, uh, can you give us a summary of what has been happening so far? Well, the president, the vice president, and uh, party executives of the NDC, uh, they came, they inaugurated this committee a while ago, and they have, uh, they are tasking these committee members uh, to deal with problems facing the party, uh, so that they, they are a strong force, like. Uh, any national uh, structure would be. Mm. Now, the General Secretary of the party, John Messier Dinketia, uh, apologized profusely to Toby Afede for announcing him as a member of the Economic Committee of the party uh, because the, his name came up as a suggestion and was rejected, but somehow they filtered through the announcement and mm. they are apologizing to Toby Afede. Okay. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you very much, Fred Smith, for that update. Uh, we'll bring you much more on this subsequently. Let's do some international news now. And a Burundi army general says senior officers are dismissing President Pierre Nkurunziza's... Uh, well, I would have to take that story again. And uh, we'll, yeah, we'll have to take that story again. We'll, we'll be back after this break. Up of our top stories. Ghana's bottom place on latest math and science survey attributed to unattractive ways of teaching these subjects by teachers. Heavy security presence at NDC headquarters ahead of President Mahama's inauguration of some party committees. And police begin investigations into physical assaults on the leadership of KJTR traders in the Ashanti region. Oh, that'll be it for this app. For more news, do what to log on to myjournline.com. My name is Kovna Chen Chen Have a good afternoon.